I've learned quite a lot over these past few busy months. Thank you very much, college. I don't know what the hell I would do without you. But if there was one thing that stood out more than the rest, it'd be this five-word statement. Writer's block is not fun. Case in point, that was all I wrote for the intro. So... Yeah. Not really good with the improv thing yet, so, uh... Not entirely sure how to, uh, um, transition this. Um... Anybody hear about Fallout 4? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. And the complaining about the graphics. Cause, um... You guys are a bunch of twats. Today's game is Mortal Kombat. And it caused... Controversy. Ooh boy, it's time to tackle this beast. I have heartedly mentioned that I'd be doing this game around the 7th episode of this show, and now I finally decided that this was the perfect time, with Mortal Kombat X out causing some controversy of its own. Thing is though, that game isn't going to be a part of the controversy that's to be discussed today. In fact, there are only three games I've separated from the rest that I believe are the most controversial games in the entire series, and are representative of the series' huge controversies as a whole. And considering the scope of this controversy, trying to pull this off efficiently was quite difficult. So, without further ado, and whether you already know about it or not, let's delve into Mortal Kombat. The first game on our list is none other than the original Mortal Kombat. Released in 1992, the game was basically the result of a team at Midway taking one look at Pit Fighter and going, let's do something like that, but, you know, not shit. It was intended as a rival for Capcom's juggernaut, Street Fighter 2, a feat that wouldn't be accomplished easily. Somehow though, the team managed to do the impossible, and the game became a huge success. All thanks to a team of actors dressed in ridiculous costumes who had modeled as the game's sprites and characters, and a little thing called... <laughs> Sub-Zero wins flawless victory fatality. The fatalities were the game's big draw, gratuitous over-the-top finishing moves that showcase some of the most violent content ever seen in video games. You could smack their heads clean off, kick them into a spiky pit, burn them to the ground, and even rip out their still beating heart. Mm, so how did the viewing public react to this? Well, at this point in time, the most violent games I've ever gotten were with Splatterhouse and Chiller, neither of which had the super the digitized graphics that would make the in-game violence even more gruesome than ever before. We also have to consider most of the public grew up in an old-fashioned era without all these fancy doodahs and interactive experiences the 90s kids had. So if the answer had been anything other than... <laughs> I think we would have a big problem on our hands. Interestingly enough though, it seems the panic didn't quite set off until it was announced that the game was going to be ported over to both the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. In order for the ports to be feasible for the system's younger audiences, however, some changes had to be made. This was especially notable in the SNES version, which had all the characters' fatalities edited and had all the blood replaced with sweat. Yes. Wet. The Genesis version, at first, seemed to have gotten the censorship hammer smacked onto its being as well. And since this is the Genesis we're talking about, it looked and sounded worse than the SNES version. But, with a code, players could unlock the actual, real fatalities, just like the ones in the arcades. And with that slight edge, the Genesis Mortal Kombat was the more popular port. This also led to a wonderful bonding session between a boy and his father, that father being a Capitol Hill aide. I will now reenact the conversation. Daddy! Daddy! Yes, son? There's a new video game everyone's playing. Can you buy it for me, please? Well, I'll do anything for my little champ. But before we do, uh, tell me a little bit about this... game. Okay. You'll solve your opponent with brute force until they fall in agony. 
And then as they watch helplessly as the blood pours out of their mortal bodies, you rip out their souls and beast on them before they succumb to a long and miserably painful death. Uh... Oh. Uh. Afterwards, the politician saw fit to discuss this with a person whom he worked under as chief of staff. And that person was none other than U.S. Senator Joseph Lieberman. And if you've kept up on the show, you'll no doubt realize what happened next. Disgusted by the game's content, the senator, along with that other guy, brought forth the game and three others to what became known as the 1993 Senate Judiciary blah 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 blah, you've heard this spiel before, and threatened the video game industry with federal sanctions against games unless they created an official rating system that would apply to all games, and not just games on specific consoles and whatnot. And the rest, as they say, is history. Now I've touched on the subject of the ESRB's creation before, including two of the games involved in that creation, both of which had little to no reason to be involved. But it's a different story with Mortal Kombat. I'm saying here and now, on the stand, with my hand on the freaking Bible, this game had every reason to be in those hearings. As I've said, Violets and Games hadn't quite progressed that much before Mortal Kombat came out, but with its release, there was widespread fear of the effect of the game's intense violence on the people whose society believed these games were for, i.e. children. The game not only almost single-handedly created the ESRP, but changed the way our society viewed video games. Not for the better, unfortunately, but still significant enough to be remembered by. Elsewhere, the UK had a bit of a fit over the game too, according to Sega, but outside of a ban in Brazil, and isn't that a shock, it seems not much else happened. Now, as to judge it by today's standards, the game's intense violence is about as basic as intense gets. It's certainly not enough to elicit a reaction as big as the one that occurred when the game was released. In fact, it's more comedic than it is shocking these days. Still, I consider this a good controversy for its historic aspects, how it really broke the barrier for video game violence and paved the way for an era in which this kind of violence had become more and more acceptable among the community, which I do think is a good thing. Alright, before I get stuck rambling about this shit, let's get to the second game. Uh, the second game. Mortal Kombat 2 was released a year after the first, and with that came a fresh new set of challenges for the team at Midway. Money was no longer a problem due to the wads of dough they made with the first game, but they had an even more daunting task. Topping the original Mortal Kombat, especially in the fatality department. And one can help but wonder, where do you go after giving the player the ability to separate their foes vertebrae from their body while their head is still attached? And how exactly do you get there? Well, problem solved, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, with that fat sack of moolah, the team at Midway were able to make a lot more fatalities. Obviously, these new fatalities were much more violent than any of the ones in the first, and they put a lot more detail into them, including disbowelment. Mm, it's like spaghetti. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 2 actually ended up being even more popular than the first game, especially when it was time to port the game to the home consoles. Now, with the ESRB intact, the games wouldn't get hit with the censorship hammer, and nothing had been compromised, even in the SNES version. And of course, all of this means the game didn't cause any controversy, right? <laughs> it seems that even with the rating system implemented, people still had to bitch and moan about the violence. It got even worse outside the states, where most versions of the game in Germany were placed on the list of games organized by the Federal Department for Media Harmful to Young Children. Or more accurately, also, the game got censored in Japan, so now fatalities look like something out of Sin City. Or... No... No... Not yet. Really, there isn't much to talk about because it's the exact same shit as the first game, and it can be reviewed in a similar fashion. Back then, it was the most violent thing that ever happened to games, but by today's standards, it's rather tame. 
However, the difference here is the first game had historical contributions to the gaming scene backing its purpose, and Mortal Kombat 2 has... well... nothing. It's well certainly not a bad controversy, but it's not a very good one either, unless it create a second rating system I somehow don't know about. There is one interesting thing though, and it's connected to the first game as well. Around 1996 or so, some actors that had cosplayed, oh sorry, I mean portrayed some of the characters in the first two games launched a huge lawsuit against Midway for using their likenesses without permission in the home versions of the game. Wait, what? Well, that just doesn't make any sense. These guys had consented to the filming and the costuming for the arcade games and the home versions used the same sprites, which are still attached to the Mortal Kombat name, so why sue? It seems like this was their attempt to avoid the controversy behind the games, and considering that the suit only involved the home versions of the games, that may very well be the case. It's like the Skaldic Games thing that happened back in May, except instead of the developers being smarmy assholes with some of the dumbest reasoning tactics ever seen from a business, the actors are. Whatever the case, both cases... <laughs> ...got dismissed almost immediately. Jeez. Now, after that game, there seemed to be a bit of a latent period for the franchise. The topic was still heavily discussed, especially in politics, and there were some attempts to control the sale of video games to minors, all of them failing, but other than that, it seemed people started to accept the games as the years passed. That is, until... Yep, the final game for today is Mortal Kombat 2011. Created by the duo behind the original games, now known as NetherRealm Studios, the ninth game in the series was the bloodiest, goriest, most disgusting game in the series to date, and seemed hell-bent on causing the biggest controversy in American history. Except, um, uh, well, n nothing actually really happened here in the US. Nothing big, at least. But don't worry about that, outside the US, the game did garner some controversy. It got banned in Brazil for about the bajillionth time, it got banned in Germany again, and it also got banned in South Korea, well, according to this article, some of which I will now read in English thanks to Google Translate. <coughs> Play accidents were great expectations from the game community site PlayStation 3 was determined to review ratings of adult fighting game Mortal Kombat for the Xbox 360 is no. The last six days game rating board Gim we Gim we fell to the classification of Mortal Kombat to reject. Resync GTA 4 or Dead Rising 2 and adult games are expected to pass through without much deliberation release got a bunch of other fans express regret. Mortal Kombat is one representative of the past games midway. If you win the fight to end the party completely finished and is characterized by a unique blend of eastern and western world. A total of 24 series 67 platform is launched. It boasts a worldwide sales volume of approximately 6 million air. Lucky. And finally, Australia banned it too. Well, when it was first released, because a few years later it got re-rated to their new 18 plus rating. So, according to them, seeing someone get ripped in half by their leg is somehow better than seeing a guy shoot up. That makes sense, considering these are the same guys who refuse to classify Shell Shock 2. The only thing about the game that some Americans found objectionable were the way the game portrayed its women, which is reasonable, but in my eyes, not enough to be considered significant. I guess it goes to show how accustomed this country has grown with video game violence, and with a few exceptions, it's something we seem to not get riled up about anymore. But why is that? First off, let it be known that there is no doubt that the games are incredibly gruesome, brutal, and potentially puke-worthy. But the thing is, it's always to the point where it just can't be taken seriously. I mean, come on, in one fatality, Johnny Cage chops his foe's head in half and then proceeds to stick an Oscar in the newly formed stump. If that isn't campy, I don't know what is. You would probably think the story would be more serious, but then you wouldn't be any further away from the truth.
This is something I've come to recognize as the Mad World phenomenon. Because if you remember, Mad World has this style of carnage too, and is probably one of the best examples of such carnage. Also, I reviewed that controversy first, so it gets seniority. And I sincerely doubt that anyone would want to replicate this stuff in real life either. The point is, this violence isn't meant to be taken seriously, but it continues to be viewed like that, and the sooner society sees the goofy side of this violence, the sooner controversies like this will have vanished. And from the looks of it, that seems to be the way we're going. Alright, that's enough preaching for one day, let's rank this shit. The original Mortal Kombat controversy receives 8 Goros out of 10. The violence itself was more potent in the early 90s, but its place in video game history ranks it much higher than most other game controversies. Mortal Kombat 2, on the other hand, gets a more modest 6 bodies sliced in half out of 10. Same deal as the first MK controversy, except it has nothing else. And finally, Mortal Kombat 2011 gets 7 Kratos babalities out of 10. It's definitely more controversial than the second one, especially in these days, but it really didn't cause as much controversy as the first one. So, that concludes yet another look into the realm of video game controversy. You know, it's episodes like these that make me wonder if I put enough information into these videos about the controversies. Sometimes, I, I get nervous and think that I forget something important, and sometimes I lose confidence that this show is really worth the effort that I'm putting in. Then I look at the video length. Yeah, I'm doing fine.